Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm Janelle and I make both faith-based and lifestyle content here on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to share my Bible study notes on Colossians with you. If you didn't know, Colossians is in the New Testament. It was written by the Apostle Paul. It is one of his many books in the New Testament. Starting in chapter one, I wrote that Paul's been praying for the Colossians and asked God to fill them with the knowledge and all spirit spiritual wisdom and understanding so that they can bear fruit in every good deed and live worthily in the Lord. I love that word worthily. What's the opposite of worthily? Worthless. We want to be the opposite of worthless in the Lord, right? We want to be worthy of him. We want to continue to seek wisdom and understanding. We don't just get saved and have faith in Christ, but then go back to life the way we know it or kind of stop trying. We should constantly be asking God to reveal things to us, to give us some of his wisdom and some understanding. And then the next verse says to live displaying patience and steadfastness joyfully. And this was a good one for me because I do struggle with patience, especially when I'm behind the wheel during rush hour, okay? I, a lot of the times, do not like waiting in line. I don't like waiting too long for my food. So I love that the Bible reminds us to be patient over and over throughout scripture because it is a hard thing to do. It does not always come naturally. And I love that it says to do this joyfully. Yes, there might be days where you wake up and you're so happy to get things done and serve the Lord and live in joy, but there's other days where we're just bitter and angry and things go wrong and we have to be intentional and remind ourselves to live joyfully. We're supposed to be the body of Christ displaying Jesus and being that salt and that light in the world. So you want that inner joy that we have and that peace that we have in Jesus reflect that externally as well. When I'm feeling a little less patient or a little less joyful, it's going back to God and asking for more understanding and breaking things down and asking him for help and that will be transformative. I liked verse 13 that says he delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I love reading verses like this because sometimes we might not feel great about ourselves, we wonder why we're here, what's our purpose, things like that, and you remember that we received this free gift of salvation, that we were chosen by God, that he took us out of this worldly darkness, and we are now part of the kingdom where his one and only son resides, and we are redeemed and forgiven of all sins. And that is such an amazing feeling. That's all I need. I don't need the acceptance of people. I don't need to be a people pleaser anymore. All I need is to follow the Lord and know that we have a place in his kingdom. Like how great and wonderful is that? And moving on to verse 16, for all things in heaven and on earth were created in him. All things, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. I love that it says invisible and visible because even things like feelings and emotions, love. Love was created by God. Of course, everything gets distorted by the enemy, but true love and loving your neighbor as yourself, this all comes from God. God is love. And then of course, creation, visible creation. I just got back from California and Southern California, San Diego area is so beautiful. I went to the Sunset Cliffs, Torrey Pines, the most beautiful views, crashing waves, beautiful clear skies, tall palm trees, mountains on one side, the sunset, like, I was there at the perfect time, the most beautiful day. God truly makes no mistakes. Then it goes on to say, he is the head of the body, the church, as well as the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself may become first in all things. That's a question you have to ask yourself. Are you putting him first in all things? Not just some things, but all things. It could be in your relationship and in your job. Maybe you're at a job that you know you don't wanna be in in the next couple years, so you're not putting in your best work. Don't do it for your boss or do it for your coworkers necessarily. Do it for the Lord. It might not be your dream job, but putting him first even when you're not happy, that's like the most important time to do it, right? I don't like this job, so Lord, help me. Do I need to find something new? Do I need to stay here? Is there something I can be doing differently? Seeking him in all areas, even things like finances. You should not just be recklessly spending. Purchases should be in the Lord. The way you dress should be for the Lord. Truly everything should be for the Lord. I ended chapter one with, he has reconciled us so that we are blameless and holy before him. Chapter two is about not being deceived by false philosophies. I started off with, God is wisdom and knowledge. Do not let others deceive you with arguments that sound reasonable. I've been there, okay? 
my partners, my friends, they have definitely put me in situations where they say, oh no, but that's not a big deal. And like, oh, but it's just for fun. It could be new agey things, astrology, crystals, things like that. And I know in that moment, I need to be careful. I need to put on the full armor of God. And to those of you who maybe have not been in that situation yet, put on that armor of God, stand firm. You can't build on what is fluid. God's truth is solid. It's like a rock. So stand firm. You know what truth is. It's not fluid. It's not whatever makes everybody feel happy. It is solid truth, right? So we need to be careful with what others say. It might sound great. It might sound convincing. That's not true Christianity. So I'm going to read the actual verse, which is chapter 2 verses 6 through 8. Therefore, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and firm in your faith, just as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Be careful not to allow anyone to captivate you through an empty, deceitful philosophy that is according to human traditions and elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. I also highlighted chapter 13. Although you were dead in your transgressions and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he nevertheless made you alive in him having forgiven all your transgressions. So again, this is just, I love to highlight and just remind myself of the verses where we are forgiven because sometimes the enemy really does get in your head and make you feel guilty and make you feel like you're not doing enough and make you feel like that this is just too hard. And that's why I love that throughout scripture, we are continuously reminded that we are forgiven and that as long as we do things for him it is enough and we are enough chapter three was my favorite chapter why because this one's very specific it starts off saying keep seeking things above where christ is not things on earth put to death sexual immorality impurity shameful passion evil desire and greed the wrath of god is coming on the sons of disobedience now that is a harsh one okay that is not the first verse you're going to share with a non-believer but these verses remind me that christianity is truly living like christ it's not about being the most kind and accepting and just being okay with everything and I feel like some Christians really want to portray that to others and feel like that's the best way to bring people to Christ and yes we do want like I said we want to be joyful we want to live in peace because the Lord truly does give us that peace at the same time again it does not mean that we're just gonna live life however we want and be exposed to all these things we need to guard ourselves we need to know what opens a portal to things that we do not want, right? We want to make sure that we discern right from wrong and that we avoid the distortion of God's creation, such as sexual immorality, evil desire, greediness, things like that. Being a Christian is truly living like Christ, following Jesus by living like Jesus. When we have those evil desires, it truly just brings chaos in our lives. So when you put that to rest and say no more, that's a game changer right there. Verses seven through nine. You used to live like this, but now put off such things such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. I have prayed so much for taming the tongue. Let's talk about in James chapter 3. The anger and rage is such a big one, right? Because I used to just be so angry and negative, and I know that the people I surrounded myself with did not do any good for that either. Now, this is part of the thing I struggle with is I see it so much now in other people because I've learned the beauty of self-control and kind of like how pointless it is to get so rageful and angry and revengeful. There's a lot of people that will like belittle someone from a distance, gossip, talk about them behind their back, whereas now I just don't really see the point. And I say that in so many of my videos where I just don't see the point. I just, I don't even know how else to put it. This is where I wrote like, we might start to lose friends and close people in our lives when we start to follow the Lord because maybe you and your coworkers are so used to gossiping every day and now you don't want to partake in that anymore. Now what? Do you tell them, hey, I'm not, I don't want to do that? Now you really got to choose. Am I looking to please people or please the Lord? Same thing when it comes to anger and rage. I was in a conversation recently where someone said, I hope they are suffering right now. And I'm like, why? All I know is that it just was not a good feeling. And I do have to make a disclaimer. I don't want it to seem like I am so mighty and I don't gossip. That is not true. I still struggle with gossiping, okay? I'm just sharing conversations I've heard, but I also share all the time things that I was doing wrong. So I actually like making these videos because a lot of the Christians I watch were born Christian. They saved themselves from marriage. They didn't get drunk and party and dressed the way I did. I actually did a lot of crazy things, which is why I like making these videos because it's a little bit different from the people I watch. I'm here to say like, 
not everybody's born the perfect Christian. Most people aren't, and I'm not here to portray myself as one. What I'm trying to get at here is once God convicted me of taming my tongue and showing me that raging and being angry and all of that just takes us nowhere other than further away from God, I just realized there's really no need to get so angry. So what do we do instead, right? Next verse is, clothe yourselves with the heart of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and forgiveness. Love humility and I love gentleness. Like I talked about patience and forgiveness a little bit in chapter one, but gentleness, I love that one. It's one of the fruits of the spirit. My favorite two are gentleness and self-control. Gentleness is hard to come by nowadays. I mean, I live in a big city, so for me, everything is fast paced and quick. And if you don't get things done fast, people are angry. I just don't see a lot of calm, gentleness, humility, kindness. I wanna see it more. So the first person to make that change is you, right? I've been working a lot on being gentle and it's again, very backwards from what we see today because to feel more powerful, people are the opposite of gentle. They think they're more effective if they're more aggressive. I'll be the first to say, I think gentleness is beautiful. Let the peace of Christ be in control in your heart. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. This is kind of like where it says invisible or visible. We're not dismissing anything here. Whatever we do, whether it's the words that come out of our mouths or the actions that we are taking, do it for the Lord. If we're cursing, if we're using abusive language, if we're raging, if we're putting someone down, gossiping, are we doing that for the Lord? So not only words, but also deeds. I am taking this in a more practical sense. Like I am learning how to do simple things like dishes and laundry for the Lord. Like sometimes I don't wanna do someone else's dishes, but then I'm like, well, it's not for them. It's not for me. It's for the Lord. The Bible even talks about keeping a orderly home. So when I don't feel like cleaning or when I don't feel like doing things around the house, that is the first thing I remind myself now is this isn't for me. We might think it's not important. We might think God doesn't care if I have a cleaner, messy house. No, he does. So I've been applying this there right now. And funny I say that because chapter four is about exhortation to households and how to maintain your household and raise your kids in the faith and how wives should be with their husbands and how their husbands should treat their wives. And <laughs> I actually didn't finish chapter four, so I don't have many notes on it. What I did get out of part of chapter four that I read was to continue to be alert in our prayers and be devoted in our prayers because that is one that is really hard. It is so easy when you pray every day to just kind of repeat yourself and, oh, I got to pray before bed, but it's not like coming from in here. It's really just like, it becomes like a ritual or like a habit and less of like a relationship. When we talk to our partners and our families day after day, are we just saying the same sentences every day? Are we just not using any emotion? Are we not invested in the conversation we're having? No, we talk to the same people every day, but we have new conversations and we're engaged and we make plans, but are you doing that with God? And I know I need to get better at this. So that's why when it says keep alert in your prayer, I'm like, this is true. Sometimes I start the prayer off well and then I start drifting off into sleep and I'm like, what am I doing? I gotta stay awake here. Then verse four says, pray that I make it known as I should. Conduct yourselves with the wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of your opportunity. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer everyone. This is my biggest motivation for reading the Bible, to be honest, because I was not raised in the church around a bunch of believers. Now that I see what the Lord has done for me, it is like one of the biggest drivers of this channel is that I help people like those around me that don't realize what the Lord can do and they're so quick to put him off without ever giving him a shot. And I love this verse because I need to learn God's word so that I can conduct myself in conversations and opportunities. God's wisdom has helped me so far, but reading his word is crucial for you to speak to others because if this is the living word of God and this is where all of our truth comes from, I need to know what's in this book cover to cover. And I love that it says, have your speech always be gracious because we don't wanna attack. Sometimes it's so, I was doing this in the beginning, it's so easy. Once things are revealed to you and you start to learn the word of God, you just like, boom, boom, boom. Like somebody asks you questions and you're like, just spitting it back out at them. And then they feel attacked they feel like you think you're better than them. And I did do that <laughs> and I, I am working. So be gracious 
with our words and honestly we have to learn to let god do the work as well sometimes we can you know plant a little seed but then we sit back and pray you know we can't force somebody to stop doing things that they're doing or saying the things that they're saying or whatever it is that you might not be comfortable with or somebody you really love like you want them to come to the faith well prayer is so powerful do not underestimate that this is where i'm going to wrap up my study on colossians there's so much more in there than what i shared today these are like the big lessons and takeaways that i've applied to my life in this book so i hope that this was insightful and that you enjoyed i will see you guys with my next video thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe all right